All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Fire Emblem Three Houses Blue Lions Maddening Mode Low Turn Count Playthrough. My name is Mecha, and I'm playing, and I'm just commentating. This is the Sylvain Paralogue, and it is the first of the route paralogues that we're doing. You probably already noticed this, but route maps are a lot tougher than kill boss maps. Pretty simple maths, really. Um, kill boss means kill one enemy to clear the chapter quickly. Um, and in route maps, you have to kill every enemy. Even though those enemies are weak, they are a lot tougher to get rid of when there's so many of them. So one tool that we have at our disposal to make this a lot easier is Battalion Wrath, because this is a very unreliable clear that requires a lot of critical hits on our, uh, critical hits on our end. Even though we have plus 50 crit through that skill, this is still a very unreliable clear, and for that reason, uh, we started the chapter from turn 1 instead of the prep screen. And the reason for that is because we had to map out the RNG for um, the chapter entirely. Uh, if you reset the chapter from your save, then the RNG gets re-rolled into something else, so you don't want that. I want to be able to retrace our steps from the beginning. So we figured out a path that used the Fine Pulse to go back all the way to turn 1 and retrace our steps like that. And now we know pretty much everything that's going to happen. Uh, usually not necessary because the clears are maximized for reliability, but for this chapter we have no other choice. Now, as you can see, we are using Byleth to take care of not just one but two thieves on player phase, um, using Bernadetta uh, as a dancer. Uh, this, this does put Bernadetta in harm's way, but as you're going to see on enemy phase, that's actually not a problem. Uh, the reason we have to take care of these thieves so aggressively is because they are passive. By default they stand still, uh, but if you enter the area that they're in, uh, a 7x7 seven seven square around the Onager that you see in the middle of them, uh, then they will start moving for the escape points and try to get out of there. So uh, even in the casual playthrough you are incentivized to kill them quickly because they drop stat boosters that you cannot get anymore if they escape the map. And you also get more rewards at the end of the chapter if you do manage to stop, the more of them you stop from escaping. Now, everyone is basically assigned their own part of the map. For example, Byleth taking the center. Uh, Hilda is doing the top right part of the map. She, Petra, Dimitri, and Raphael all have Battalion Wrath. And Dimitri also finally got Battalion Vantage. And all these are, of course, very useful here. Felix gets the top left. Uh, he has Ingrid as his Ajachan to get her to level 10 right here for the Pegasus Knight reclass. And uh, Felix has Battalion Vantage. Uh, if he fails to kill an enemy on player phase, then if that enemy attacks him on enemy phase, he has a shot at killing them before they get to do damage to his battalion, which is very important. Uh, again, once once these battalions reach one third of their health, we really want to make sure that they don't take any more damage as ne than necessary, because if they lose all their health, we have to repair them back to full, or not at all. And if we have to repair them back to full, then we can no longer use them for Battalion Wrath or Battalion Vantage. And uh, in maps like these, not having those would be a very big difference maker. So something like Raphael getting hit here, for example, uh, by this brawler and losing all the health on his battalion, that's pretty bad. And this is a good time to remind you that the takes that you see in these videos are not necessarily the final takes. Um, they just show the strategy and the clear, uh, but they don't, they're not always equally continuous. So if you see something different, like a battalion being back to one-third health after a broken previous chapter, that might be because the maker of the run decided to redo, redo the whole map off-screen. Uh, just to make a tiny change, like dodging an extra hit from one of these enemies, because enemies that chip down our battalions are a pretty big pain in the butt, uh, but the recording is already tedious enough as it is. Uh, Dimitri is doing great work though, thanks to Battalion Vantage. And this is one of the reasons why, again, we assigned Linhart to him, to maximize his EXP gain. Uh, now you see everyone is kind of going to a corner, partially because that's where most of the bosses are. There are four of them on the map, three of them in corners and one of them in the bottom center. Uh, these bosses will not move, and they need to be taken out on player phase plus enemy phase generally. Uh, we like to use battalions with uh, gamuts on them to make sure that they cannot do the same to us, and that way they are forced to attack us, kind of like a trick that we've deployed several times already. Now by killing these bosses, not only do we get rid of them for you know the sake of low turn count, but we also prevent that escape point from being used by the thieves. This is not very relevant for here, but it can be useful in a casual playthrough. Uh, if a thief cannot escape to an escape point that we got the boss killed off, then they will go for another escape point instead. So you can kind of use this to juggle them around if you're able to do that. But in our case, we just killed us all six thieves on player phase because we have no other option to get it to turn. If it wasn't for the many amount of passive enemies, uh, like the thieves and the bosses, then it might be possible to get a one turn of this chapter, uh, just through having enough movement. Uh, but of course, this would like take a big rerouting, and it's just a hypothetical, so it doesn't really matter very much. I'll talk a little bit about the weapons that are being used to maximize reliability in this chapter. Uh, Byleth has been making use of the Rapier Plus, which is very nice both for its high accuracy against the Thieves, uh, but also its effectiveness against Armor Knights. Uh, the Rapier Plus is of course forged from the Rapier that we got from the Hanuman Paralogue from last uh, video. 
Um, otherwise, we can use Maces to get rid of Armor Knights. Uh, really light and really useful weapon that we've used before. And I really got a new respect for this weapon personally. Another pretty cool weapon that we used in this chapter is uh, the Killing Edge on Petra to maximize her critical hit rate. We would have liked to have a Killing Edge Plus. Uh, we use several other Forge weapons to increase uh, hit rates or crit rates or even durability. But unfortunately, we only have so much Black Sand Steel, which is what, you, what we use to forge um, crit weapons or forge crit on weapons. And we don't have any more extra lying around for Petra. So in those cases, we have to take a hit to reliability. Uh, but generally, when we can, we use forge weapons. Sylvain is using a hammer against uh, an Armor Knight boss, but generally, of course, he's going to be using Swift Strikes um, because hitting twice is better than only hitting once. Kind of depends on the situation. Uh, speaking of Sylvain, um, if you don't have Sylvain in your party when you clear Chapter 5, you won't have the Lance of Rune at this point, and if that's the case, then uh, in this paralogue, you actually get the Lance of Rune at the end. Of course, we've had Sylvain since it starts in the Blue Lion's house, and even in other houses, it's recommended that you get Sylvain ASAP or at least before Chapter 5, just so you can get the Lance of Ruin uh, before Rhea snatches it from you, basically. It does have really high might, so it combos well with combat arts like Night Kneeler and Swift Strikes for reaching damage thresholds. But yeah, this is turn to enemy phase, we wrap up the last few enemies. Um, Ingrid even gets to level 11, even though her threshold that she needs to reach is on level 10. I cannot stress enough that planning route chapters like this takes way more planning than I can explain in the seven minutes it takes, but a couple of things that I missed so far. Um, Bernadetta was actually put in range of an enemy armor knight to bait him away from Sylvain and make it more likely that he survives. If you paid very close attention, you might have seen that there was one red AI line, one aggro line that was actually lying. Uh, there was an enemy that was supposed to go for Petra that actually went for Byleth. Um, both of them can kill that enemy, so it doesn't really matter for the sake of possibilities, but the accuracy on Byleth was much lower. Uh, we sneak in one last kill with a Scythia somehow from an Armor Knight because she warped away Felix out of his range. And then we collect our huge amount of rewards from this chapter. That reward included an extra large bullion to solve our gold problems for a little bit. And that is going to be the chapter. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, let me know. And I will see you next time. Peace out and goodbye.